Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. Well, we're gonna do a feeding video. I don't do a lot of these because I like to focus more on the educational or care type stuff. However, it's been a little while and I know people look forward to them. Plus, it gives me an opportunity to kind of show off some of the spiders that I have and to do updates on ones that people have asked about. So as you can hear, the crickets are chirping in the background. The roaches, well, they're not making much noise at all, but that's because it was feeding time today. So Billy wandered up here with the camera and we got some footage of some of my guys eating, at least most of my guys eating. We have a couple fails in here, but that always happens with the feeding videos. So enough talking, let's get into seeing some spiders eat. All right, we're going to kick this one off by feeding three Thrixopelma species. The fun part about this one is two of these were not Thrixopelma species when I bought them. So the first one we're going to do was originally called Theraphosini species Pura. It is now considered to be Thrixopelma Purians or the Peruvian green velvet. I don't care what it is, honestly. It's a gorgeous spider. The male showed a lot of green. The female shows a lot of green after molt. She did just molt, but... I think she's probably going to brown out a little bit. So Billy's going to get a shot of her while I load up a cricket. Boop. And this one has been an awesome eater for me. I have, I'm actually growing up three more slings right now and they're putting on massive size. One more. Oh, let me get that one. Do one more. Quite hardy. I know a lot of people have been picking these up and asking me about them. I did do, I think, a couple husbandry videos on it. She'll probably grab those ones later. But gorgeous spiders, very hardy, grow quickly. The slings do, I've had no issues with them whatsoever. Any fast growing, really good eating sling is usually okay with me. And they grow up to be beautiful adults. Again, the male was absolutely spectacular with lots of green all over. It was really, truly a surprise because I didn't know what these were when I got them. I mean, I'd read up about them, but hadn't seen really great pictures of them, but definitely beautiful spiders. And this one's getting quite large. I know somebody early on told me they were a smaller species, but I think her last molt before this was well over four inches and she obviously molted again. So I'm guessing she's probably pushing five inches or so. So gorgeous spider. I think some of the green is showing up on the carapace. It was. Good. All right. Because I don't want to seem like a liar. So we're going to go ahead and close that up and let her have a moment to eat in peace. All right. So let's just start here. So the next one we have originally was purchased under Homeoma species blue. They are now being sold under Thrixopelma longicoli or the Peruvian blue zebra. These guys, again, the male had plenty of blue on him. The females, right after a molt, have some brilliant blues that obviously washes out just a bit once they start to harden up. Oh, you're not getting, oh I was going to say, you better be pushed. Usually it's great. Hopefully some of the blue is coming out on the femurs. It is a gorgeous little space of blue coming out. Yes. What I think is almost more striking than the blue is that kind of uh, salmon color striping on the knees. I kind of really like the look of that. We're going to go ahead and drop it. Another one for her, which she's going to grab, and then we'll do one more. One more, one more. There we go. Got it. She's been a little dainty after her last mold. Now, I got these guys as slings. Again, they grew fairly quickly, which made me think that they weren't I don't know. They didn't remind me of homeoma species with the speed they were growing. However, they've been pretty laid back overall, which has been nice. My Thrixopelma ocrity, which we'll be doing in a minute, looks like she's creeping up to the top. This could be interesting. The, all of my ocrities have been very high strung. And obviously, differences, there's going to be differences in behavior from species to species. So you can't just go, oh, all homeoma are very docile, while all Thrixopelma are a little crazy. That's obviously not the case. But you start to notice similarities with it. And this one was kind of acting a little more laid back. But obviously, not a homeoma thought to be a Thrixopelma now. So this is cool because I actually have three Thrixopelma species. I love focusing on certain genera of tarantulas and trying to pick them all up. So that's quite the little find there. So there we have Thrixopelma longicoli, the Peruvian blue zebra. And this one's going to make it fun for us because she is right up top. So let's see if we can get some image of her before she inevitably retreat. And I spoke too soon. <laughs> Darn it. All right, so I don't know if you're going to be able to get her in here. I'm going to try. She's been a great eater. Thrixopelma, this is my third Thrixopelma species, I think. Let's see if we can get a tricket point in her direction. Of course not. And so far, I've had two males. One molted out very small, about four inches. It was a mature male. And the other one I had was already about four and a half inches. So I'm like, oh, this is definitely going to be a female. I was all excited. Did a video about it. Obviously, didn't sex the spider and it molted a few molts later and was a giant male. You know what I'm going to do? No, no, I was going to open this up. If you want to uh, 
Get up top, I'll try to get another one there. This one's always, deep. they've been very, very skittish for me. They have this thing where when they get threatened, they stick their little red butts in the air. I've heard that they grow on wild, they climb on wild strawberry plants and use that as camouflage. Hopefully what's coming through is the spider is actually quite green overall. The color's coming through. The red is, um, mm. it's tough to see through. Boop, oh, that was interesting. Hopefully you can get, get her to come up top. I'll turn it around a little bit. Oh. Here, I'm going to open this carefully. We're getting quiet here because we're trying to get her a good shot of her. I might be able to get her from the side. Well, there's that little red butt. I don't know if the green is coming through on it but they it is conceivable that they could blend in very well on a strawberry plant especially with that bright red butt and obviously insects would come up to get those strawberries and probably make a nice little meal for these guys this one has this one hasn't been too bad with the hair kicking other species i've had or the other specimens i had have been pretty nasty hair kickers so this one is obviously quite shy and she is hiding here trying to hide from the lights and I don't blame her. And one thing to note is this species does have arboreal tendencies. I know there's a lot out there about keeping them terrestrially, but those of us that have kept them realize they definitely are an arboreal species, although they don't look exactly like an arboreal species, what we're used to seeing with arboreal species. But I definitely, when you raise these guys, you want to give them some height in their enclosures and they will definitely use the height. A lot of times when I come down during the morning, she is up on this cork bark, just poised, ready to hunt. So there we go, Thrix opelma. Ocarty, what is it? The Peruvian red rump, I think. Peruvian strawberry hiney. <laughs> Let me get that <laughs> one working. <laughs> All right, so next up we have my Brachypelma Classy or Mexican Pink. I featured this one in a Brachypelma video, and honestly, I'm just going to keep featuring this one because I absolutely love the way she looks. She's been a great eater, grown a little slowly, but they usually do, and there we go. This is something about the brockies when they eat. It looks cute. Yes, they're grinding up a little cricket, but there we go. Let's give her another one. Whoop. Love the coloration. This one's called the Mexican pink, I believe. Mexican pink leg, something like that. And the legs, I wouldn't exactly call them a pink, but they are definitely a color a little different than red. Hopefully it's showing up on here. Yep, well, it's showing up. Beautiful spider. Love the coloration with the black body. And, you know, I love the Brockies for the reds and the oranges and such. But the color of these guys, those legs are just stunning. Awesome little spider. This was one I picked up as a freebie. Somebody sent it to me for free several years ago. And it ended up being probably one of the best freebies I ever got. Because I didn't know what I was getting. I was like, oh, Brocky Pelma. I was kind of doing more of the old worlds at that time. Wasn't as interested in Brockies. But, uh, man, am I glad I got her. So, all right. So, there we go. Brocky Pelma Classy or the Mexican Pink. Next one up, one of my all-time favorites, Orphanacus philippinus. Hopefully we get this. This one has been hunting. She just molted, and she's been a voracious eater. So let's see if we can get her out here. Yipper. I love the color of this species. Now, I think I've mentioned before that the juveniles in particular have that bright tangerine orange color. As they get to be adults, the females will dull out a little bit, but they'll still have some of that orange after both. They're gorgeous spiders, and they spend a lot of time being basically day glow orange. I mean, they're so bright. Oh, one more cricket. Boop. There you go. Get it, get it, get it. She's beautiful. I know. They, I was hoping this one <laughs> like would come out. I would do one of these every single time little piggy and now she's going to go hide this one did have this is a burrowing species usually they'll burrow but like many old worlds if they don't choose the burrow they'll do a lot of webbing so you see she's kind of made herself a little web spot here this was originally a burrow she kind of filled it in after her or right before her last molt molted out here up in there and now she's been hanging out here so whatever the case she's been rather calm she doesn't seem to be the least bit affected by the fact that she's more out in the open sometimes when you get old world species that don't burrow they can be a little nasty she's been perfectly fine not particularly skittish overall and as you can say see she'll eat for us beautifully on camera but awesome spider absolutely beautiful spider one of my all-time favorites obviously if you look at the header if you're watching the video on my channel look at the header of the channel that is her mother on the header of the channel so orphanacus philippinus the philippine tangerine everybody should have one
beautiful species. This one's a little piggy. So let's go on to our next one. Close this one up. Hopefully she stays out. This one's a feisty little booger. Let me grab a cricket. So the next one here we got is our Crypsodoma species Black Amelia. I'm going to go ahead. Oh, come on. This one is such a good hunter. Let's see if we can lure her out. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Every time I feed this girl, she walks right out in the open and eats, and I, this time she's not showing herself. Awesome little spider, very bold. She does use her burrow. As you can see, she'll go and retreat to her burrow if she feels threatened. But more often than not, when I come down uh, up to the tarantula room, she's right out in the open, which is great because she'd be a nice little display spider. Was that me hitting the flashlight? That was yes. weird. Let's see if we can get her to... There she is. So unfortunately, she's not going to bless us. I think you got shots of her before she went under her thing, right? Yeah. This one, for it reminds me, again, speaking of Brachypelma, she always reminds me kind of a, of a Brachypelma species, but has always been an awesome hunter, even with a little sling. Hits like a truck, grabs three or four crickets at a time. She's usually out in the open. Awesome little spider. So for people looking for a beginner species with a little more spunk, I would definitely encourage them to check these out. I know a couple people have contacted me after I did the last video with them and said that they have them and love them. So definitely two thumbs up with this species, Crypsoderma species Black Amelia. I believe called Black Amelia because people thought they kind of look like B. Amelia, but they're supposed to have a little black triangle on the carapace. Mine's never had the black triangle, but I have spoken to other people that have seen the black triangle. Moving on to the next one here, we have my Acanthoscuria musculata or the brazilian black velvet which i don't get where that name comes from because it's not black but this one i usually have a hard time drawing out Let's see if we can draw her out the crypts of dome oh thank you i've been trying to get her for a while beautiful spider picked this one as up as a sling a couple of years back and again it was kind of i don't want to say impulse buy but it was kind of an impulse buy we're at a pet store they had one i'm like i'm going to try this species out and i'm so glad i did because it's awesome little species oh, there we go Beautiful striping on the knees, great eater. This one ate last time almost right up until she molted. I was actually shocked where she ate, and literally like three days later, she molted. So that was kind of cool. I don't have a lot of them do that, but beautiful spider, not necessarily black, but kind of more of a velvety brown. Sometimes they have almost a reddish brown appearance to them. And there she is, looking gorgeous. I'm glad we could get some shots of her, and we're going to sneak over in a minute because my black Amelia came back out. Billy's been motioning for that. So let's just get a little bit of this one eating here. I just want to see if she comes out any further. Nope, she's going to hide. Let's check out the black Amelia. And I'm going to care. Up, up, up. There she is. See, I told you she's bold. She came right out after she ate. She normally doesn't stay in her burrow very long. Gorgeous little spider, though, but that's the on the carapace right in there is usually where they can have some blackness. I don't believe mine ever had. I'll have to go back and look through the videos because I kept expecting her to get it, and she never got it, but I don't care. Gorgeous spider nonetheless. So we cheated. There's Crypsodoma black Amelia, and there's the butt of the A. musculosa or the Brazilian black velvet. All right, so next up we have my Harpactera polker bees, or golden blue-leg baboon. This is an old female. We just figured out she's pushing, I think, nine, eight or nine, and she's still eating very well. This is one of the most docile tarantulas I have in my collection, and she has always been quite docile, but the other one I have is a little more high-strung. Now these ones, as juveniles and young adults, sport a very striking combination of very golden bodies and bright, almost like metallic blue legs, kind of, oh, kind of almost looks like armor the way it kind of catches the light. But as they age, the blue kind of washes out a little bit, turns more into a blue-gray. The bodies are a little less vibrant. I don't think they're any less beautiful. They're gorgeous spiders. So a lot of times you see stuff online and it's either juveniles or ones where people have really amped up the colors to kind of show them off. But this here female is, like we said, an older one. This is more their natural adult coloration. Still a beautiful spider. And she has been just an absolute dream. This was the first one I got of the species. And she has been very laid back throughout. So there she is. Harpactera. 
polka beads, the golden blue leg baboon. All right, next up we have Formictibus species Salinas. I picked up a few of these about a year and a half ago maybe, and they're growing a little more slowly than some of my other Formictibus species, but they're finally starting to show what I believe is some adult colorations. Go ahead. Oh, oh really? We're going to do that? Let me drop another one. I'm pretty sure she's just freaked out by the light, so no. Weird. Well, I've got a funny feeling she's just not going to eat on camera. These guys have been looking pretty good. The thighs are starting to show some colors. Overall, looking different than my Formictibus cancerides that I raised. I was really worried that some of these new species I was getting were just going to be different variations of cancerides. So far, so good as far as her looking different than the other species. Who knows what she'll look like as an adult. I've heard mixed reports of what the adults look like. So very excited to see what happens after she puts on a couple more molts and shows off some adult colors. I really wish you'd grab one of those crickets because I don't believe she's in pre-molt, but I will check later. A lot of times when they're in the light, they won't eat. So later on, I will check. If she's still not eating after things calm down, I will have to pull those crickets out because keep in mind that crickets can injure or even kill a molting spider. So uh, for Mictopus species, Salinas not wanting to eat for us on camera today. Beautiful spider nonetheless. Let's go on and see if the Trapepii will eat today. So next up we have one of my, I think, what do I have, four of these? Five maybe? Trapepii juveniles. She's probably going to come bursting out of here. And I lied. <laughs> She's not going to do anything. Nope. These also hit like trucks usually. Except for when I'm trying to catch them feeding. Oh, you little booger. She was just like, oh, oh. no, you want to eat that. Come on, oh, there we go. These guys are finally starting to put on some of that adult coloration. Oop. Darn it. Oh, she doesn't look like she's gonna come out, which is amazing because literally these guys are always out in the open. I have five of them, they're always sitting right out in the open. They will burrow. I've noticed the slings and juveniles. This one I gave her a little hide. She hasn't done much burrowing here, but obviously she's retreating to her hide when she's scared. So we probably won't keep her on camera all that long because we're going to respect the fact that she's kind of freaked out. This should be an enjoyable meal for her, not something where Tom's sitting there putting the spotlight on her and freaking her out. But there we go. One of my juvenile and trapepi or nandu trapepii. What is this? Brazilian blonde, I think. I always end up screwing up the common names. So we'll leave her alone, see if maybe she comes out in a bit, and we will try a brachypelma species. So this one here is brachypelma smithy. And I'm going to open this up and drop a cricket in, and she's going to eat. Did you get it? I think she got it, right? Okay. Yep, she's got it. All right, I'll drop another one in for her. These guys have been a little bit high strung, but I will say since rehousing them into these larger enclosures, they've relaxed a bit. So it goes to show you how much that the enclosures can kind of make or break them in terms of behavior. I think when she felt like she had a little more room, was less trap. She feels a little more comfortable. They have not been kicking hair as much. I grant they both molted again since being rehoused, but I have noticed they are calming down quite a bit. And I have high hopes that once they become a young adults that they will calm down even more because obviously this species is known for being very laid back and even tractable. I'll drop one more in, see if she'll eat it. They've been little nasty hunters too, which I've enjoyed watching. I don't want to stick the tongs in there because I'm afraid she'll grab the tongs. Come on, Cricket, move. Hopefully the colors are coming out. She's finally starting to show some of the orange on the knees there. On the smithy, the orange will eventually extend down to this leg segment in here. She'll see orange on the knees, orange in there. We're on the hemorrhoi. It's just on the knees here. There's none down there. And usually they have the darker carapaces, but in this case, hers is a little lighter. Beautiful spider regardless. So there we go. Brachypelma smithy, one of the hobby staples. And the next one, I'm hoping this one, I told Bill we got to watch her because she likes to go on a little walkabout. So I'm going to try to get her steered in another direction, but this is my Sud Hopalopus species blue, which I believe they're called the Columbia, was it the Columbian green bottle? Or what is the other one? Colombian dwarf. I love common names. They're all just so made up. But hopefully her booty pops a little bit because they have a beautiful little blue booty. And I'm going to go poop. 
It's like violet. Yeah, it's really, depending on the light, it really will pop. What? What is that? That was weird. Gorgeous little spider. Right after a molt, that blue is just spectacular. And hopefully she's, she seems to know the crickets there. Never mind. I take that back. She has no idea. Look at that blue. Love it. These guys have been very, very inquisitive. Like, the, the, so I was telling Billy before, and we got to keep an eye on her because she tends to like to go for a little walkabout. And <laughs> that walkabout does not entail eating that crick. She doesn't be every time. This is one I've never been able to get to eat on camera. Right there, eat it. Eat, no, 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 no. Right here. There you go. There's going to be another situation of a spider cohabitating with a prey item. Yep, she's not going to eat on camera for me again, but we get to show her off a little bit. We see that blue booty. So this group here, we've had really good luck so far, but this group here, we've got a lot of people not eating or not appearing. So we will leave her alone because she eventually will snatch up that cricket later on. Sued Hapalopus species blue. She'll be getting a brand new enclosure soon. She's one of the ones I have earmarked for one of these down here. She'll be get one of these with a lot more stuff to do in it. More room to walk about. I'm going to try one more time. Come on, you have to eat for me. Eat. Eat. Oh, she's petting it like it's her cat. Oh, they're cuddling. Okay. Well, <laughs> so much for that one. Sued Hapalopus. I'm, I'm guessing this one is not going to end well. And I'm guessing once we get her back and it gets a little darker, she's in a spot where it's usually pretty dark. She'll probably eat. So, Sued Hapalopus species, Columbia cricket lover. No eat. All right, so next up we have one of my Theraphosa uh, apophysis or apophysis. This is one of my young adults, and if I can get a grip on the roach here, hopefully we will get to see her eat. Oh, yeah. That was a great grab. Love these guys. Fast growing, very, very leggy. I know everybody says they're big brown spiders, but there is like a reddish brown to them. Unfortunately, it's not. It's looking washed out on the camera. They're much more reddish brown in person. The males actually sport purple, which is something I try to tell people, and they're like, oh, they're just big brown spiders. Well, at least in the male's case, they're not big brown spiders, and they can get super large, if not the same size, even larger in leg span than their cousins. Oh, yeah, there's some gooeyness there. Oh, man, that's nasty. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you should get right in on that. Uh, then their cousins, Theraphosa sturmi and Theraphosa blondi. This one was the top of my wish list for many, many years, so I'm very excited to raise two of them up. We have one confirmed female already, which is great. And again, just enjoying growing them up. She did grow, and this one, but actually both of them grew a little more slowly than my Sturmies or Blondies did. But they, the other thing is it's kind of misleading because they were probably just about as leggy as the other ones were. They just weren't as beefy. As you can say, this one's a much more spindly compared to the much beefier Sturmy or Blondie. And oh, we got some milky innards pouring out of there. Mmm. I'm not going to lie, that's kind of grossing me out a little bit. Like, I, for I mean, years... I mean, moving, and it's just full, like... Yeah, full disclosure, for years, I was not only arachnophobic, I was actually scared of just about any insect or arachnid, and crunching of bugs was something that almost would make me throw up. So I've come a long ways, because I'm kind of watching this, and I'm 50% fascinated, 50% totally grossed out. I feel bad for the roach <laughs> once again. I hate seeing them struggle like that. Um... <laughs> Poor thing, but things got to eat. So there we go. Theraphosa apophysis or apophysis, eating a poor roach. I don't want to watch this struggle any longer. So we're going to go ahead and put the top back on, let her eat in peace, and go over to somebody who's probably a little more of a dainty eater, and she'll be eating crickets, which nobody likes. So <laughs> at least I think she's going to eat. She's been a little picky lately. This is obviously Grandma Stola Polker Peas, one of my favorite all-time species and we'll see if she's ready to eat Boop. Mm, last time i fed her she didn't eat right away and later on she went and chased down the crickets so please eat please eat it's food for you please eat who cares we can just admire her now obviously choco golden knee called golden knee because of the give me a hint golden knees she's hasn't molted in quite some time she's an older girl and so the knees wash out a little bit. But right after a molt, it's really striking. Also, the overall base color is usually a bit darker, which really makes the knees pop. But I don't know what it is about these guys. I know when I first read about them, 
I read that they were one of the largest Grandma Stola species, and I was really excited to have a big Grandma Stola. And I got them as little teeny tiny slings, and I think part of it is just I raised them from little microscopic slings to these big ones. Oh, oh, did she actually eat? Did you grab one? Sweet. All right, good. We can count this. I don't want too many failed feeding attempts on here. But um, having grown them up since they were a little teeny tiny, that's kind of something special. And I just love them. I don't know what it is about them, but one of my favorite all-time species. If I ever did a list of my favorite spiders, this one would be on the list by far. I know everybody makes fun of me because I say they're all favorites. But if I had to pick, like, absolute favorite species, this one's right up there. So, Grandma Stola Poker Peas. The Chaco Golden Knees. I almost pulled the light down on myself. Oh, Dilly's getting some amazing, looks like she's getting some amazing shots of them. Awesome spiders. I know some people find them boring because they're like, everybody's got Chaco Golden Knees. Everybody's got the G Polka Peas. But there's a reason for it. They're awesome spiders. I got to fill a water dish in a minute. Just filling the darn thing up. Get that in a minute. G Polka Peas. All right, so our final one here, we are going to feed my Lazyodora parahibana, or salmon bird eater. Who's going to take down a big old adult female doobie. I feel bad feeding out the female. Mm -hmm. I, I have an issue with the roaches. Like, you raise them, so I always feel bad feeding them off. Let's see if she wants a second one, because she's a big girl. It's crunching. Oh, my God. Oh, I've got to get the crunch. Oh, oh yeah, it's, that's freaking nasty. Oh, my God. That's so bad. Nope, nope. All right. I'm afraid I keep wanting to stick the tongs in, but she's pursuing. Nope, nope. Oh, let's see if she digs it up. Darn it. She'll have to get that one later. So there she is. Beautiful girl. Love this feed. This is one I have to admit. When I first got it, it was because it was early in the hobby, and a lot of people grab these because they hear they can get as big as a Theraphosa species, Theraphosa blondie, and they want a big spider but they hear about the theraphosa blondie being a bit of a handful and more of an advanced species so they pick these guys up that's why i picked my first up it was under those circumstances but since then grown to love this one now her last molt i think was i want to say eight and a half or eight and three quarters inches long so she's got to be pushing nine inches big beefy girl now when they just first molt they're almost jet black overall and obviously they have those salmon colored hairs around here they have the salmon coloration there on the knees and striping and then as they get further and further away from their molts they tend to brown out a bit but still gorgeous nonetheless and when folks say they're just a big brown spider i don't think you can appreciate how massive they are unless you see them in person i mean here i'm going to stick my hand out i'm just kidding I'm totally <laughs> um if you saw her next to my hand you see she is a big beefy beautiful girl and she's been rather she's been a beautiful display spider always sits out in the open and she is rather laid back when I opened up the cage, you know, scrambled a little bit because she obviously felt the change in air pressure, but then just kind of sat there and she'll sit there and eat. She'll sit there when I do the maintenance in her house or in her closure when I throw a water dish and really doesn't give me any trouble at all. She does not, however, like her plants. As we can see, I'm trying to get these plants to grow up, but she not only webbed all over them, but stamped all over them. It's still growing. It's those golden pothos. They're almost unkillable, but I've had a couple tarantula species kill them and she's really working on it. But awesome spider had this girl i think you got her for me for my birthday as a matter of fact years ago she was a, like a two inch or three inch sex female and easily become one of my favorites just because she's so massive so pretty and always out and about so there we go ending it off with laziodora or laziodora parahibana the salmon bird eater can't wait to dig that roach out later so I was glad that the majority of them ate because anybody that's watched my feeding videos knows that we usually have more misses than hits. So it was good that everybody was eating today. The formictibus species that I tried to feed did go and eat the crickets later on. And unfortunately, I'm very sad to report that the sued Hapalopus species blew and the cricket, they broke up and she ended up eating the cricket. So that one didn't end well, but I was glad that she actually ate it. I didn't feel like fishing it out. And I still can't find the roach that's in the Lazy Adore Parahibana's cage. So I'm going to have to dig some more later on. Right now she's out in pre-mold, so it won't do her any harm. But I do want to make sure I get it out of there if she can't find it and eat it. That'll do it for this one. As always, if you like enough to subscribe, very much appreciate Click the little circle up there. I'll put another feeding video down in here, something else up in here. If you take the time to comment, I will take the time to respond. Know that it can take me a couple days. Happy Halloween, everybody. That's coming up in a couple days. We'll catch you all next time.